So coding is one word that freaks out everybody. Whoever is planning to get into DevOps or um, whoever wants to switch to DevOps role. I have read a lot of comments on how much of coding is required. I don't have a lot of experience in coding. Can I get into DevOps engineer? So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that scary word coding and call it more like an automation. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because coding is a generic term that is used as a software engineer and uh, when you go for interviews, you might be worried that you will be asked about algorithms or you know the backend engineers usually are asked or a software engineer questions that you might get as a DevOps engineer. So that's why I'm going to call this as a, an automation. So from here on, you will be hearing about an automation tasks that are required as a DevOps engineer. So by end of this video, I'm going to explain to you where this automation is actually applicable and how much of automation slash little bit coding that you have to do as a DevOps engineer and what programming languages that you might have to learn to become a good DevOps engineer. And in the last part of the video, I'm going to share an amazing news you all are waiting for where if you want to get all the tasks that are that a DevOps engineer would do and me along with my team have come up with the common tasks that we have been doing for last few years and we're going to share everything and you have to wait till the end of that video for that news. The first things first which I have addressed in my previous video as well is automation required as a DevOps engineer? The answer is yes. So the expectation from the DevOps engineer is that you have to automate heck out of everything. So automation is very important as a DevOps engineer. Now when you go for an interview it depends on the job description obviously but you will expect equations you will expect a lot of questions on the shell scripting and the python scripting or the python programming or integration of the tools or specific dsls that you would usually use in that tool or in that platform but essentially when you go for an interview so they will definitely ask you about what automation you have done or how much automation you know with respect to tools or what you have automated in past as a DevOps engineer. So then the question is where does this automation fits into the DevOps engineer role? Now as a DevOps engineer when you are working on continuous integration or continuous delivery process so you have to automate every part of this whole CI CD process. So let's start with the simple thing. Now let's say a developer has committed the code. Now your role as a DevOps engineer is to take that code and deploy that code to the production or to the non-production or staging. So till that point, wherever automation is applicable, you would do that. And if that automation requires to write a simple shell script, or if automation requires you to write a, a simple Python script or a complex Python script or using some Argo CD or Terraform scripts. So it has variety of automation, but your role is that you have to automate those things from end to end. Now starting from the CI process, let's say developer has committed the code. Now you, you as a DevOps engineer, when you're using Jenkins, let's say, or uh, GitLab CI or GitHub Actions, so your role would be to take the code to integrate the unit tests and you might have to explain how to integrate the unit tests and then run the unit tests. And then if the unit tests are successful, you would send in, you know, you would pass the build and proceed to the next step or if this fails, you would inform the developer that the unit test has failed or a static code analysis test has failed that is done in the sonar cube and then the developer has to fix it. So this whole CI process is part of the automation. So you as a DevOps engineer has to automate that process. Whether you are using a simple groovy script in Jenkins or you are using you know, DSL of uh, GitLab CI or GitHub Actions, sometimes the tools will help you to write them very easily but sometimes if the tool doesn't support that, you might have to write a shell script or a Python script based on that. And this is what is asked in interviews as well. Now, after the CI process is done, now you have an artifact. Let's say you got a jar file. So the next step is how you can automate to put the jar file in an artifactory or in an access repository. How can you make API calls to the artifactory APIs or an access API to authenticate using, you know, uh, OAuth basis instead of hard coding the passwords and then having this jar file or putting this jar file into the artifactory securely and here you have to make sure that you know you're not using any developers usernames or passwords or you might have to write a python script to use the sso based authentication and now once you have the jar file in artifactory 
The next step is how can you take the jar file and how can you deploy that into the cloud or into an on-premise server or into a, into a Kubernetes cluster. Now here the DevOps engineer role will become little complex but I would not call it as complex but here you have to know how to you know provision the infrastructure. Whether it is on-prem infrastructure you might have to use Ansible. So in Ansible again you can use the default modules of Ansible where you don't have to code a lot because you just have to consume the modules and you have to know how to use them. But let's say most of the time the modules are sufficient enough but let's say the modules that are given or the default modules that are there in the Ansible are not sufficient then you might have to write the modules in Python. And the same applies with uh, Puppet. I guess you might have to write in Ruby in Puppet's case or uh, something else in Chef's case. But basically this is what is expected here uh, for, for, the con for the configuration management or if you're trying to provision infrastructure on-premise. Now when it comes to cloud, now if you have to take the jar file and deploy that to cloud, obviously you have to use Terraform or CloudFormation. And straight away, you know, it's very easy to use Terraform. You have modules again there. You have to know Terraform DSL. But there are situations where you might have to write your own modules in there also. And same with CloudFormation. And you would use them. And then you would automate that part to deploy that. Or you would automate how to create the launch configurations in AWS. How to use the AWS APIs. like For example, Boto3 APIs using Python. Or how would you use, you know, GCP's APIs. Uh, G Cloud SDKs and then provision the infrastructure. Sometimes if it is automatically scalable, then you might have to create an image, how to use the Packer tool to create an image. How can you create this whole chain process of taking the jar file, creating a Docker image out of it or creating an AMI out of it in AWS terms and then making that AMI as part of the launch configuration and deploying that into the AWS cloud or deploying that into GCP or Azure. So after the CA process is done, most of the time you would be involved into this part, like how to write the Terraform scripts or how to write the Helm charts uh, if you're using Kubernetes or um, how to configure the Argo CD and how this integration would actually work. So this is where you are tested. So what you would do is before you go for an interview, you try to see how you can create this whole CI CD process using automation. And then how can you make sure that once the code is committed. How can you take that code right from uh, you know your GitLab or GitHub repository, and all the way to a Kubernetes? Or you know if you're using Kubernetes, that's even better because the Kubernetes there are a lot of jobs. Or how to take the code to the AWS, like if it's a sample Spring Java application or something like that, or even to the GCP. Now after you have deployed, let's say you have come this far into you know, automating or creating this continuous continuous integration process or uh, CI/CD process. Now, the next part is also important because as a DevOps engineer these days, your role is also important to maintain the servers or to make sure that the servers are healthy, or you know, uh, to make sure that they are able to scale properly. The scale in and scale out is working, and how can you use the capacity planning whenever there is going to be a spike in the load? And these are some of the SRE and DevOps roles that are important. Now there as well, your tasks or your automation scripts would be like, how can you get the logs out of the CloudWatch, let's say in AWS, and analyze the logs or put that into S3 bucket. And this is where you have to use Python. Let's say you're part of a team where you have to find all the EC2 instances and tag them. And you have to use again Python using Cloud Functions or using Lambda Functions. So again, you have to automate that part. In interviews, most commonly they would ask you more about awk, sed. So these two are commonly used in a shell scripting. Now you might have to write a cron job, most commonly used in Linux. So how would you write a cron job? How can you write a shell script to uh, go through a files, go through the log files, sort them and uh, find the strings inside a log file and then cat them into a different file or how would you rotate the log files if you're using a platform like CloudWatch or something else, then that is fine. If not, you still have to automate this part. And let's say you're using a monitoring tool. Now, how can you use the APS of the monitoring tool to gather some stats and then, and then put that into a different dashboard? If you're having your own Grafana dashboard, how would you display those stats into the Grafana dashboard? And now you must have got some idea about how 
automation applies into your daily DevOps role or a DevOps job. But the good news here is it is not like your normal coding as a software engineer because you don't have to think through the algorithms to code here. You have to use your basic logical sense to automate the things and then come up with a decent script that would help you to complete the task which you are which you are doing manually. Wherever there is an opportunity that you are doing manually today, which is also called as toil in SRE terms. So you are expected to automate those tasks as a DevOps engineer. And that's why it is important that don't worry too much about the coding. If somebody says to you that coding is requirement, it is not that you know they would be asking you about how to write a software or uh, how to code a software, but they would ask you about how can you integrate certain things? How can you deploy certain things? How can you automate those things? Now, how can you learn these Python or shell or, uh, you know, go or any such basic programming language? So my suggestion is don't go to Udemy masterclass that has 20 years 20 hours or 30 hours of course, rather, whatever task that I'm going to share with you, see how you can automate those things by yourself. So let's say you have to tag all the instances. There are 300 instances in AWS, you know, you have to tag immediately whenever the instance is whenever an instance is up or you have to uh, shut down an instance or start an instance based on the cron job or scheduler or you have to gather some logs using CloudWatch or you have to automate certain Terraform scripts. So what you will do is you will write down all these tasks or scripts that you have to prepare and then you straight away would use Google uh, and Stack Overflow to learn how to automate those things. So that way, unconsciously, you will be learning Python, how to use Python, basic stuff, and as well as how to automate these things. Because the moment you start learning or uh, start going into these Udemy classes where they're going to teach you for 20 hours, you would be bogged down first. You will you will think that, you know, it's very complex and you lose the confidence of getting into a DevOps engineer role. Now to the last part of the video where I said I'm going to share an amazing news for you all is that you don't have to write whatever I have said as part of the tasks. I'm going to share all the tasks. So me along with my friends, what we're doing is we are trying to collate everything that we are doing, that we have been doing in past as a DevOps engineer. We're going to create each and every task at a high level and then what programming language that's been used. So your next job is to see how you can automate that task. Don't expect us to write a script and give it to you. You have to do your due diligence as an engineer and that's expected from you as a DevOps engineer and do your research and see how you can how you can automate that task. And the best thing is I'm going to put it in the I'm going to put this in GitHub page. You can also contribute based on your experiences or if there are if anybody who is watching this video who have very good DevOps experience, please contribute to that GitHub page so that it will be helpful for the whole DevOps community. And I'm going to share this link in my Instagram post first and then I'm also going to share this in my other social channels or in the community post. But if you haven't followed my Instagram, please do follow there so that I can easily share the updates. Now I hope that this video gave you some confidence getting into a DevOps engineer role or preparing for a DevOps engineer role. So don't worry too much about coding. Think this as an automation task that you have to do as a DevOps engineer role or any, any engineer these days. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope this was a helpful video. So let me know in the comment section if you like this video and do share it with your friends. And let me know in the comment section if you want me to share any such content. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.